This video goes with sections 24 and 25 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and is going to teach you about subject and verb agreement and how Greek forms questions. You can find these topics in Hansen and Quinn on pages 49 and 50. So we're going to talk about the agreement of subject and verb. And I'm going to put an English sentence up and it's going to seem strange. If I say the girl dance, it doesn't sound quite right. It doesn't feel like the way English is supposed to work. And that's because the girl is singular, but dance is the plural form. It's the form of the verb dance that we use when we have a plural subject. So I need to get rid of the plural form and switch it to the way English does singular verbs. And that would be to put an S on the end. And now that's singular too. And what we say is that the subject, the girl, now agrees with the verb dances. The girl dances. That sounds right. If we put the original strange sounding sentence, incorrect sentence up, the girl dance, the other way we could change it to make it be correct is to change the girl from singular to plural. And we do that by adding an S there. And now we have plural. The girl's dance is also correct because the girl's, the subject, is plural and so is the verb dance. And I'm showing you these things first because you know if you are a native English speaker already how the language works and that the subject needs to agree with the verb. And I want you always to realize that even if you've never talked about it before or learned about the jargon that goes with language, that you already have an instinct for how to make it correct. Now, in English, we can also replace the subject with a pronoun. And we could say, she dances, or we can say, they dance. In both cases, we're replacing the subject with a pronoun. And in both cases, we're making sure that the pronoun agrees with the verb, that the pronoun is singular for a singular verb and plural for a plural verb. Now in Greek, we don't have to worry about the agreement of a subject pronoun with the verb because that pronoun is already expressed in the ending of the verb. Choreoe means she dances without any pronoun, without any separate word that we have to make sure agrees. And so that's a singular verb that already has a singular pronoun implied in its ending and we don't have to do anything separate or worry about agreement and we could just translate this in English as she dances because English does need a separate pronoun. By the same token, choreousi in Greek does the same thing in the plural. That already means they dance in the plural and that's simply in the ending and we don't have to worry about making any other word match in number. But if we do give it a separate subject noun to be the subject, then that does have to agree in number with its verb. So the girl dances is hekora korelwe, where both the noun subject in the nominative is singular, hekora, and it goes with a singular verb, korelwe. And then in the plural, Hi, korai, koreusi, we have a plural subject going with a plural verb. So this works exactly the same way in Greek as it does in English. But there is something I need to tell you about in Greek, which I've come to call the weird, 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 weird rule. And that is that neuter plural subjects in Greek take singular verbs. I don't think anybody knows why this is true, but that is the case. So we can have a sentence that says ta biblia paideoe with a plural neuter subject ta biblia and a singular verb paideoe and that means in English the books 
educate. So remember, when you come across the weird, 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 weird rule, that it's how Greek does it. It's not how English does it. So you wouldn't translate that into English with the books educates. That would be what we did before where we might say the girls dances. It doesn't sound right in English. And what you're always trying to do is express in English the same idea that Greek is spelling. You're not matching up exactly the way the two languages do things because they don't match up. So again, the weird, 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 weird rule is that neuter plural subjects take singular verbs in Greek. And you'll just have to get used to making that into real correct English sentences, like this one, the books educate for ta biblia paideoe. All right, that's what you need to know about agreement and sub of subject and verb in Greek, mostly the way English does it, except for the weird, 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 weird rule. And now I'm going to move on to questions in Greek. All you need in Greek to make a question is a question mark. Now, Greek question marks look like English semicolons, and they're sometimes a little bit hard to see. Nevertheless, that's all you need to turn something into a question. So, ha anthropos dora pempe means, with that question mark, is the man sending gifts? Now, sometimes Greek will have the particle ara at the beginning to alert you that you're embarking on a question that will have a question mark at the end, but it doesn't have to have it. So R is nice when you see it because it puts you on alert for that hard to see question mark, but it isn't necessarily going to be there and it doesn't have to be there for it still to be a question. So Ara ho anthropos dora pempe means is the man sending gifts? And of course, English can also express that as does the man send gifts? Without the question mark and the ara, the same word order is the sentence, the man sends gifts, or the man is sending gifts. So Greek, unlike English, doesn't have to change word order to make a question. In English, we have to use helping verbs to ask questions, as you can see in is the man sending gifts or does the man send gifts. But Greek doesn't have to change the word order from a statement to a question. All it does is add a question mark and occasionally add ara to alert you to the question mark. And that's what you need to know about Greek questions. Just keep an eye out for that question mark. And there you have sections 24 and 25 on the agreement of subject and verb and on questions. Now go read.